Hi, I'm Chris Thompson, and I've got a bit of an unusual story to tell you about how I discovered some amazingly powerful parenting strategies for toddlers and preschoolers. I'll be talking about ways to understand and communicate with your child that you've probably never heard before, giving you the answers to dealing with the terrible twos, poor child behavior, tantrums, and all sorts of other common parenting problems. Some of what I say in this video may offend some of the so-called experts, so I might not leave it up forever. Please watch it while it's still available. I promise it will be one of the most enlightening parenting instructional videos you've ever seen, and I believe you'll be amazed. I have to assume that if you're watching this, you've probably been dealing with a lot of stress or anxiety that stems from being a parent. We love our kids so much, and yet sometimes they can drive us crazy, and their behavior and actions make us worry that we aren't doing a good job of raising them. I've heard from lots of moms and dads who feel like they're failing as parents, and I know you want peace and quiet back in your home, and you're not alone. In fact, you're in very good company. The good news is that you can get the changes that you want. My experience proves you can actually turn things around and really start to enjoy your kids and your time as a parent much more than you are right now. I'd like to help you to make those changes starting right now by showing you some of the most important tools you can learn. Here's more good news. Most of the problems you're facing with your child's behavior are not your fault. Think about it. Kids don't come with instruction manuals. Nobody trains us on how to actually deal with toddlers and preschoolers. They don't teach this stuff in school. And when you're expecting your first child, you may have taken one of those parenting classes. The ones that teach you how to hold a baby, how to feed a baby, and everything baby. Sure, it's important stuff, but it's actually pretty easy when compared to the terrible twos and threes, and as one of my friends used to joke, the freaking fours. These years are big sources of stress for parents. You can either fly by the seat of your pants and fly off the handle, or you can learn and apply some much better ways of dealing with your kids. Because you're watching this video, you fall into the second category, and you should really congratulate yourself for that. There's only one real reason you don't have the peaceful home that you want with well-behaved children. Nobody's ever given you the right information and the proper tools. You've either been given no information, or even worse, the wrong information. You've continued to apply the correct solution, which didn't work despite it being the correct solution. So let's fix that. Here are the top four lessons that every parent needs to take to heart and apply. Number one, behavior is driven by emotion, not logic. This is fundamental to everything. Behavior for any person of any age is determined by their emotional state. People act from their emotions and then they later justify their actions with logic. But small kids don't have the ability to use logic, so they act purely from emotion. Say your child won't get dressed in the morning, won't eat his dinner, or won't share a toy on a play date. Your child mentally connects the behavior that you want to some kind of emotional pain. So no matter how many times you ask, your child won't cooperate. Changing your child's emotional state is the key to getting the behaviors that you do want. So how do you change a child's emotional state? I discovered some very specific language patterns to make it easy for your child to feel good about the behaviors that you do want. Once they feel good about it, the behavior change follows instantly. I see so many parents trying to use logic instead. If you eat that cookie, you won't be hungry for dinner. Or, if you don't wear this coat, you'll be cold outside. Or, you need to have a nap or you're going to be cranky this afternoon. It simply doesn't work. I bet you can validate this by thinking back to your own experiences with your child. Number two, we tend to overuse the word no when we talk to our kids. You remember the story of the boy who cried wolf, right? The little shepherd boy was bored while watching the sheep, so he decided to cry wolf to make the villagers come running. Before long, they stopped responding to his false cries. When a parent cries no at every little thing, kids stop listening. People, including kids, are programmed to notice differences. If you're driving down the road, you don't tend to notice the normal behavior of other cars or people walking on the sidewalk. But if a car suddenly comes to a stop, 
or if a child suddenly runs into the street, you do take notice because something is different. Ask yourself if you say no so often that it has faded into the background and become as ordinary as cars on the road or people on the sidewalk. The better alternative is to change your child's behavior without even having to resort to saying no most of the time. I'll show you exactly how you can do this using language techniques that seem almost magical and almost too easy. Number three, if you want to have any chance at all of influencing your child's behavior, you must have rapport first. Rapport simply means having an emotional connection to another person. This is why strangers will talk about the weather or gasoline prices. They're unconsciously making general comments that they know the other person will agree with. Agreement creates rapport. It's a natural process we all do in adult relationships. It's as natural as breathing, but we often forget that we need to build rapport with our kids too. If little Samantha is playing in the sandbox at the park and you suddenly announce to her that it's time to go home, you have a huge chance of creating a fight because you missed the first step of building rapport. I'll show you how you can learn lots of ways to create this crucial emotional bridge before you change a child's behavior. Number four, language is a powerful tool and there are a bunch of tactics you need to learn to create the outcomes you want. Here's a specific tip. Use positive language instead of negative language. Ask your child to sit down instead of stop jumping on the couch. Ask him to hold his cup with two hands instead of don't spill your milk. This is the opposite of how most of us speak, but science has proven that speaking in negative terms and saying what you don't want will actually cause your child to do exactly what you're trying to avoid. You want some simple proof that will work on you right now? Okay, do not think about the color of your child's hair right now. Don't think about it, and certainly don't form a mental image of it right now. See? As soon as you're told not to do something, you at least have to think about it to understand what it is that you aren't supposed to do. The difference is that young kids, unlike adults, don't have something called a critical faculty which helps to process the negatives in language. I've got so much more information to share. Can you imagine what would happen if you installed a powerful set of communication strategies within your mind? It's not as hard as you might think, and the effects are fast and powerful. How much more peaceful will your life be once you know how to fix or even prevent most of those behavioral problems that you've been dealing with? Would you like to start enjoying more laughter and smiles with your kids? Want to really feel like you understand your kids and know that you're doing the best job you can? I want you to experience the joy of a loving, nurturing, and emotional.